It's being called the breakthrough of the century. Today, scientists confirm that gravitational waves do exist. Albert Einstein first explained them in his general theory of relatively, relativity a century ago. So using math, he argued that the waves are ripples in space and time, and they're created by two black holes colliding. All right, so for those of you who need a refresher course in science, we've got Derek Pitts, Chief Astronomer and Planetarium Director for the Franklin Institute of Technology, joining us from Philadelphia. Hey, Derek. How are you guys there in New York? All right, Good. so we're, we're sitting here, yeah. like, we're trying What's to... What's the purpose of these waves? We're, what we're are they? Why are the they wave, there? Yeah. And <laughs> why is it so important that we know that they're there? Yeah, this is a really great discovery, and it's a great discovery because, number one, Einstein predicted this a hundred years ago, so he knew through the mathematical work that he was doing that we should be able to see the signature, the gravitation signature of enormous, uh, very, very active events in the universe. Even back then he knew this. Now what he also knew was that these signals caused by the interaction of very massive objects would be very, very weak, so we'd need a very, very sensitive detector. And what we've learned today is that the detector that has been built is sensitive enough to actually detect these very, very, very subtle waves of these activities happening between massive objects elsewhere in the universe. So <clears throat> the idea that these, uh, these waves would in fact prove his theory that there are these massive objects like these black holes where not even light can escape from how will that change the face of science? Will that have rep, uh, implications for space travel? Will that have implications for life here on Earth? What are we going, what are scientists intending to do with this knowledge? Well, the intention of being able to identify gravitational waves is we'll be able to see the universe in an entirely new way. So imagine this. Imagine wherever any of us are standing, we suddenly develop the ability to see everything in x-rays or some other radiation that we normally can't see. It's almost as if a person who has been deaf their entire life and could not hear could suddenly hear everything around them. And so this is going to reveal to us an entirely new set of knowledge about the universe that we could never detect before. So in fact, it actually makes objects that before were completely invisible to us, like very, very distant black hole collisions or very, very distant supernovae or any of those sorts of things that are very far away from us, we can't detect the light. We will be able now to detect the gravitational wave that comes from them and we can characterize those gravitational waves so that we can figure out exactly what they are, what happened, where they are, and when that happened. We want to take a look at a, a tweet that was uh, posted on Twitter earlier today. It's from the official Albert Einstein um, representative group here. It says, if Einstein were alive, he'd totally do a mic drop <laughs> after today's... <laughs> <laughs> After today's conference on national waves, um, or rather gravitational waves, excuse me. So, I mean, is this kind of like winning the lottery for, for some people, for, for scientists? Is it, that was a huge, huge yeah, I mean, discovery. Yeah, people are sort of oh, saying this is, this is an yeah, this is truly an enormous discovery because, you know, a Nobel Prize was won for just the idea of being able to synthesize that we actually would really be able to do this if we could design a, a device that could do this. And so this is like winning the biggest lottery in the world, the biggest jackpot in the universe, all of those different things all rolled into one because it really is taking us in a new direction, much like Galileo's telescope opened the universe for us to see different things, or Hubble Space Telescope revealed the universe to us in a way we didn't know before, any of those sorts of things. That's what this is like. It's a huge step forward in opening new doors, new windows, new vistas to being able to, being able to see all sorts of activity that we couldn't see before. Now, one other thing that's part of this that we might be able to do with this is to better understand how the universe actually began because we'll be able to figure out more, better how gravity works and that will help to paint that picture of what the early history of the universe was like. Yeah, uh, Derek, you said that uh, this is comparable to the Hubble telescope. Some people have even said this is Alexander Graham Bell, you know, Mr. Watson level of understanding. But I guess two questions. One, 
how was Einstein so smart? Why, uh, why is there only one Einstein? I know it's like saying, why is there only one Mozart or only one Beethoven? But, you know, it seems like with, with the inherent skills you might need to be a musician, the mathematical uh, application of science would be one that it wouldn't take 100 years for somebody to understand this. Um, and just in real terms, I mean, to explain to the layperson, well, how important this is, how would you do that? Well, what, yeah, what exactly is a gravitational wave? A gravitational wave is what happens when two objects in space collide. So if you have two gigantic black holes that collide, what they do is the effect of that collision causes ripples of energy to pass throughout the universe, and they can travel forever. But the interesting thing is that those ripples of energy coming from these gigantic objects are very, very, very subtle. But they're there, and if you have a way to detect them, then you can identify that something has happened, whereas you may not be able to gather the light from that event to see that it happened. Now, as far as Einstein being able to have the mental wherewithal to do this, you have to remember that Einstein's work in the general theory of relativity was in a realm of scientific uh, theoretical thought uh, uh, that was really unknown before because he was using mathematics and physics to try to paint a model of how the universe could work. And before his time, there really weren't too many people who had the mental capability to use all of the tools necessary to paint that picture. He happened to be the first person to come along to really be able to put it all together in a way that he could then paint the picture of what the mechanisms were that could make the universe come into existence manifest itself as we see it, and from that be able to have some idea of how the universe would continue to grow and change over time. Derek that Pitts, makes if, sense. Yeah, yeah, Derek Pitts, if we can just um, maybe the control room put up that picture of Einstein sticking his tongue out at everyone because I just think that this is like the perfect picture for today. We want to thank you for your time and leave you with this image. Mic drop. Everyone. Thanks for having me. <laughs> Thanks, Derek. Thank you.